Okay, yeah, so when you're trying to break your opponent, remember, we're still we're still following the ABCs. We're going to have a game plan. We're going to uh, feel our opponent out. We're going to wrestle aggressive but cautious. I'm going to try to get the match won. So what we like to say is there's a feeling where I just go, okay, I got this, right? It's just the instincts. Sometimes it's just my opponent's kind of choppy. At least for me, I was kind of like, a pretty athletic wrestler, very quick. Whereas someone who's maybe a very powerful wrestler who ties up tight and they feel like my opponent is easy to move. They're like, okay, I'm gonna, this guy, I'm gonna turn you into a rag doll. So they get a different feel. Jordan Burroughs, who just won a seventh world title, which is the most ever in history. John Smith, my coach in college, has six world titles, two Olympic, four world. Um, you know, he scores a lot from space, so from the outside. So he might just look at your reaction. He might fake a little bit and see your reaction and say, okay, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna be able to get to you at least a couple of times this match, maybe a lot. And generally what happens, let's use Jordan Burroughs as an example. I may get to your and he's he's known for feeling his opponent out in the first period. Cause in freestyle is three minutes, then you get a like a 45 second rest. Then you get another three minutes. So he's he's known for having close matches going into the third period, and he comes out and lights people up. So, you know, just to reiterate the feeling them out concept, uh, it's world-class wrestling tactic is what it is, and everybody should do it, um, even though I get criticized for, for, for coaching that sometimes, um, not by our kids or parents. They just trust what we're saying. But um, So, yeah, as far as breaking your opponent, um, we generally do that on our – on our feet, right? So you'll see guys, you know, it's a tight match and, and I get in, you know, then I get an escape and then, I mean, we see it in soccer too, right? So some like, if I have, if, if I put like uh, 11 shots on goal and nothing goes in and you never get the ball on my, uh, you know, my side of the field where my goalie is, um, people will come down to the game late and say, man, it's 0-0, zero, zero. this must be a hell of a game. And you're like, no, it ain't. Next team is destroying these guys. Nothing's just gone in yet, but just wait. What happens after half, sometimes we might put a shot on goal that might go in, and then it's like the avalanche, right? The dam breaks. And then it might be, you know, a six to nothing game or something. So it's called working for free, and we talk about this concept. It's a business concept, too. Um, I just actually saw it on social media. Ice Cube, a famous rapper, he's like, if you can't put if you can't put five years of effort in without making any money, you're never gonna make it in in business or in you know music. And, and we we got to do that in wrestling too. Sometimes you got to put a lot of years in without getting any 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 gold. Just deal with it. But as long as you're on track, right? Um, Robert Kiyosaki, I'm a big fan of him. He's kind of like a business coach, right? The Rich Dad, Poor Dad series. He talks about the concept of working for free. And I've taught that to my kids, right? My son's jujitsu gym is not profitable right now, but gonna be three to five years from now, it's gonna be tremendous. I go, just work for free. Well, you know, it's part of it. So I think sometimes in sports, we have to work for free. And knowing that once I break through, it can, it can, get, it can get fun at the end. So in wrestling, you know, maybe I find myself winning four to one, a uh, hat at towards the end of the second period and my coach is like cut him <clears throat> so I will let you up and I'll take you down again so you know if it was five to one then it's five to two with the escape I take you down at seven to third period um you know this is a mistake I could pick bottom but what if you ride me for a minute now you've taken a minute away from me <clears throat> and you've gained some momentum back I'm better off picking neutral or if you pick down, I'm going to let you up and I'm going to take you down. It's called the takedown game, right? I'll kick you out, take you down, kick you, take you out, kick you out, take you down. And that's kind of how you, quote, break someone in wrestling. Whereas in boxing, I mean, we all know what that's going to look like, right? MMA, they're going to stop it before I get a chance to break you. And rightfully so, right? That's a dangerous sport. But, so that's what we're talking about when we talk about breaking our opponent. Just like boxing, we talk about one of the chapters. Once I get the match one and I feel like, the pressure's off. I'm like, okay, I got this guy. No, what are you going to do? Well, if there's two seconds left, just stand there. It's over. But if there's four minutes left, when you have that feeling come over you, if you just go for the win, 
you're doing yourself a disservice because what's going to happen is it's called separating yourself from your competition. When you have a chance to go for the knockout and you don't, that says something about you and that's not a good thing. <coughs> so <clears throat> we have to switch gears and go for the knockout, so to speak. And I'm not sure how that's done in jujitsu, but that's how it's done in wrestling. Take them down, let them up. Take them down, let them up. And you might be able to take them down to their back potentially at the end. But, um, you know, it's just kind of like it wears you out emotionally to have that take place. And when someone does that to you.